a blooming mess. It was a special day on the island of Sodor. Knapford Station was going to be decorated. All the engines were very busy and very excited. Sir Topham Hatt was at Tidmouth Sheds. Knapford Station is being decorated. There are lots of jobs to do. Thomas, you must go to the quarry and collect slate for the new roof. Yes, sir. Emily, you must go to Maithwaite Station and collect the flowers for the new window boxes. Flowers? How lovely. I know all about flowers. I know that buttercups are yellow. Emily. And then take them to Knapford Station. Yes, sir. Emily huffed happily to Maithwaite Station. She passed Toby. Toby was delivering wood for Knapford's new floors. Hello, Toby. Hello, Emily. Then Emily passed James. James was delivering pots of paint to paint Knapford's new walls. Hello, James. Good morning, Emily. Emily puffed up to a junction. Mavis was on the bridge above. Hello, Mavis. But Mavis didn't say hello to Emily. Emily was surprised. Mavis? Mavis? Hello? Mavis still didn't say hello to Emily. Emily wondered what was wrong with Mavis. I know what's wrong. Mavis must be feeling sad today. At Maithwaite Station, Emily buffered up to the flatbed of flowers. There are a lot of different flowers here, Emily. Emily knew the names of all the flowers, but she didn't say a word. She was thinking about Mavis. She wanted to make Mavis happy. Then, an idea flew into her funnel. I'm sure flowers would make Mavis happy. I have lots of them. I can leave some of them at the quarry for Mavis. So, Emily didn't puff straight to Knapford Station with the flowers. She took the track to the quarry instead. Emily huffed happily into the quarry. She couldn't see Mavis anywhere. I know. I'll decorate the quarry with flowers. That will make Mavis very happy when she comes back. Emily looked for a place to put some flowers. This is the perfect place. Mavis will see the flowers here as soon as she arrives. Emily felt very pleased with herself. Now, hmm, I must find somewhere else to put some more flowers. Emily looked around. She didn't see Edward puff into the quarry behind her, but she did hear the loud crash. Fizzling fireboxes! What was that? Edward had crashed straight into the flatbed of flowers and rolled towards the hopper. Edward, look out! Those flowers are going to make Mavis happy. Pardon? Edward was confused. I'm sure flowers by the hopper would make Mavis happy. The hopper's so gray and dusty. Emily felt even more pleased with herself. I must find somewhere else to put some more flowers. Emily looked around. She didn't see Thomas reverse towards the hopper behind her. But she did hear the loud crash. Bubbling boilers! What was that? Cinders and ashes! Bust my buffers! 
Watch out for the flowers! They're going to make Mavis happy! At that moment, Mavis pulled into the quarry. Whatever has happened? Emily looked at Mavis. Mavis wasn't happy. She was very upset. What has happened to my quarry? And what are those flowers doing here? Emily gasped. The flowers haven't made Mavis happy. The quarry is in a terrible mess, and it's all my fault. Emily chuffed up to Mavis. You didn't say hello today, so I thought you were sad. I brought the flowers because I wanted to make you happy. Mavis sighed. I wasn't sad. I didn't say hello because I was thinking about all the jobs I had to do today. Emily felt very silly. I wish I had asked if you were sad. Then I wouldn't have brought the flowers and the quarry wouldn't be in a terrible mess. Mavis looked at the mess. She looked very sad. Emily wanted to think of a way to make Mavis happy. And now she knew she had to ask. Mavis, what would make you happy? I would like the quarry to be tidy and all the engines to be really useful. Emily felt very pleased she had asked Mavis. Now she knew exactly what to do to make Mavis happy. I can't move! I'm covered in slate dust and my firebox has gone out! Don't worry, Thomas. I'll shunt you over to the coal hopper. You'll soon be burning brightly again. Thank you, Emily. So Emily worked hard. She puffed and she huffed, and she heaved Thomas to the coal hopper. Then she biffed and she bashed the flower beds away from the hopper so that Edward could shunt his freight car to be filled. tidy again, and all the engines are being really useful. Is there anything else that would make you happy? Yes. I want you to deliver the flowers to Knapford Station, where they should be. Right away, Mavis! At last, Emily arrived at Knapford Station. Here are the flowers for the new flower boxes. Thank you, Emily. Emily watched as the flowers were unloaded. They looked very pretty. Did you know, Thomas, that those yellow flowers are called buttercups? And those red ones, Edward, are called roses. And those white ones are daisies. Mavis puffed up. She was smiling. My! You're smiling, Mavis. Are you happy? I am. Those flowers look wonderful. And that made Emily happy, too. Snow Tracks. It was winter time on the island of Sodor. It had snowed all night. The trees were white. The cottages were white. And even Sir Topham Hatt's railway was white. There was not an engine in sight. At Tidmouth Sheds, the engines looked out. Percy was very excited. It snowed! Thomas didn't like the snow. Bother! I'll have to wear my heavy snow plow. I don't like snow. You can get stuck in it. Stuff and nonsense. Snow is soft, but I am strong. It won't bother me. Then Sir Topham had arrived. Gordon, you must take some freight cars to Brendam Docks. They are needed for an important coal delivery. You are a strong engine, but snow is slippery. Puff the long way round. Yes, sir. Thomas, you must deliver bundles of firewood to the stations. Yes, sir. And then Sir Topham Hatt left. Thomas puffed with pride. That's a very special job. 
not as important as mine. I shall go straight to the docks. I shall steam over every hill I come to. Gordon pumped his pistons proudly. Puff the long way round. That means, Gordon, don't go up any hills. Hills are not too steep for me. I am strong. I am the best. And Gordon wished out of Tidmouth sheds. Gordon huffed and he puffed. His smoke was gray against the snowy white countryside. Soon, Gordon came to a hill. This hill isn't too steep for me. I shall steam over it. So, Gordon thundered up the hill. I am special. I am the best. And he chuffed right to the top. That was easy. But Gordon found going down the other side wasn't so easy. The rails were icy. Gordon's wheels slipped and slid. He went faster and faster. Perishing pistons! Spencer was huffing up the hill. The Duke and Duchess of Boxford were on board. They were having tea. Slow down, Gordon. But Gordon couldn't slow down. Slushy snow sprayed from his wheels. Spencer was covered from footplate to fender. Rattle my rods. I'm as dirty as a ditch. But Gordon didn't hear as he clickety-clacked on the icy tracks. Gordon came to another hill. It was even bigger. This hill isn't too steep for me. I shall steam over it. So, Gordon thundered up the hill. I am special. I am the best. But the tracks were icy. The snow was deep. And the hill was very, very steep. Gordon steamed slower and slower. Bust my boiler. This is hard work. Wheel turn by wheel turn, Gordon huffed and puffed to the top of the hill. He felt very pleased. I am the strongest. I am the best. But at the bottom of the hill, there was deep, deep snow. The snow flew up all over Gordon's face. Bubbling boilers! I can't see! Gordon rattled off the main track and into a siding, straight into the back of some slate cars. Gordon was covered in thick gray dust. Oh, the indignity. At least I can see now. And Gordon huffed on towards the docks. The snow was deeper and deeper and deeper. Gordon could hardly huff through it. This is hard work. Now, Gordon was at the bottom of Gordon's hill. Gordon's hill was the biggest of all, and it was covered in thick, thick snow. Gordon's hill isn't too steep for me. I shall steam over it. I am strong. I am the best. But Gordon didn't feel so strong anymore, and he didn't feel the best. Gordon puffed against the snow. Snow is soft, and I am strong. It won't bother me. But the snow wasn't soft. It had become a giant snowball. It grew bigger and bigger. Gordon started to huff slower and slower. He thought his boiler was going to burst. Oh, my! Just then, Thomas chuffed up behind Gordon. Thank you for clearing the tracks, Gordon. Now I can deliver the firewood faster. Then there was trouble. The giant snowball was too big and too heavy. It started to push Gordon back down the hill. Look out, Thomas! Cinders and ashes! Gordon and his freight cars rolled back faster and faster. Thomas chuffed back faster and faster. He slipped into a siding, and Gordon rolled round the bend. The giant snowball will surely miss us now. But Gordon was wrong. The giant snowball rolled down the track and crashed and bashed into Thomas. Help! 
Gordon saw Thomas and his car of firewood lifted high in the air and derailed. Now, it was Thomas who looked like a giant snowball. Luckily, no one was hurt. Gordon felt terrible. I'm not strong, and I'm not the best. It's a disaster. Gordon steamed slowly to Thomas. I'm sorry, Thomas. I'll huff my hardest to help you. Gordon heaved and hauled. He pushed and puffed, but the snow was too heavy. The snow was too thick. Gordon could not chuff through it to help his friend. I'm not strong enough, Thomas. I'll find Rocky. He's stronger than me. Gordon found Rocky at Brendam Docks. Hello, Thomas. I'll have you back on the tracks in no time. Soon, Thomas was no longer a snowball. He was a bright blue engine again. Thank you, Rocky. Now I must deliver my firewood. I'm very late. The station masters will be waiting, and they'll be very cold. I'll help you, Thomas. What about your very important job? I delivered my freight cars to the docks. Now I can help you with your very important job. Thomas was happy to have his friends help. Thank you, Gordon. Thomas and Gordon chuffed cheerfully through the snow. And when they came to a hill, they always puffed around it. Together, Thomas and Gordon delivered the firewood to all the stations. The station masters were very pleased to see them. At last, Gordon and Thomas puffed home to Tidmouth Sheds. They were tired, but they were happy to have been really useful. Gordon wished grandly. I have something very important to say. No engine is special, and every engine is best. Thomas and his friends whistled. Double trouble. All the engines were very excited. They chuffed cheerfully and chattered as they clattered along the tracks. Today was Sir Topham Hatt's birthday, and there was to be the grandest birthday party on Sodor. Thomas had a very special special. He was to pick up Sir Topham Hatt and Lady Hatt for the party. As Thomas approached Maithwaite Station, he gasped. Ahead, he could see Sir Topham Hatt already on the platform. Cinders and ashes, I must be late. Thomas pulled into the station. He was worried. I'm sorry, sir. I thought I was early. Sir Topham Hatt turned around. Thomas gasped. <gasps> Sir Topham Hatt had a mustache. Thomas was so surprised he nearly popped a piston. Thomas, my good friend, you're looking perfectly polished today. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Sir Topham Hatt chuckled so loudly his top hat wobbled. Thomas was puzzled. Sir Topham Hatt never chuckled so loudly that his top hat wobbled, and Sir Topham Hatt never called Thomas his good friend. I know, Thomas. Let's go to the Whispering Woods. It's one of my favorite spots. We have plenty of time before the party. All aboard! Now Thomas was even more puzzled. He wanted to ask about Sir Topham Hatt's new mustache and why he was acting so strangely. But Thomas didn't want to look silly. So he decided not to ask. Thomas pulled away from Maithway Station and chuffed towards the Whispering Woods. Thomas puffed up to the Whispering Woods. Edward was there. Edward had brought children to visit the woods. Then he was to take them to the party. Hello, Edward. Hello, Thomas. You look worried. Thomas was worried. But before he could explain, Sir Topham had climbed down. Marvelous! What fun! Please, sir. Uh, we can't stay long. The children mustn't be late for the party. Oh, party smarty, Thomas. We have plenty of time. You worry too much. And Sir Topham Hatt strode off. Hello, children. Who'd like a game of hide-and-seek? Did Sir Topham Hatt say a game of hide-and-seek? Yes, he did. And Thomas's wheels wobbled with worry. 
Sir Topham Hatt played hide and seek for a long time. He was very happy. So were the children. Edward was puzzled. Sir Topham Hatt never plays hide and seek. I know. And what's that on his face? A mustache. It just appeared. Today, Sir Topham Hatt doesn't seem like Sir Topham Hatt at all. Just then, Sir Topham Hatt came back. Thomas wanted to ask him if he was feeling all right, but he didn't want to look silly. Thomas knew that silly engines weren't really useful engines, so he didn't ask any questions. We must hurry now, sir. We'll be late. And so will the children. But Sir Topham Hatt wasn't worried. Don't hurry the children, Edward. Let them play. Edward was so surprised his boiler bubbled. Then Sir Topham Hatt jumped aboard Annie and waved to all the children. Thomas's wheels clickety clacked. He puffed and he huffed along the track. He knew they were late for the party. Thomas stopped at the junction. Suddenly, Sir Topham Hatt jumped out of Annie and climbed up to the signal box. I won't be a moment, Thomas. Thomas was amazed. So was the signalman. Sir Topham Hatt never came into his signal box. Hello there. May I have a turn? Thomas looked up. He saw Sir Topham Hatt pull a lever. <coughs> then Thomas heard Gordon's whistle. Cinders and ashes. Here comes Gordon. Gordon had all the important visitors aboard the express. He was taking them to the party. With a clang and a clatter, the points changed. Gordon and the Express were no longer on the express track. They were now on a branch line heading away from the party. Thomas heard Sir Topham Hatt whoop for joy. Hooray! Fizzling fireboxes. I must ask Sir Topham Hatt why he's being so strange. But when Sir Topham Hatt came down from the signal box, Thomas didn't say anything. He still didn't want to look silly. What fun! All aboard, Thomas! Thomas raced towards Maithwaite. Lady Hat would be waiting. They were very late. Thomas was worried. First, Sir Topham Hat had a mustache. Next, he wanted to play hide-and-seek with the children. Then he sent Gordon off the express line and away from the party. Hmm. Sir Topham Hat is acting very strangely indeed. Thomas puffed into Maithwaite. The station master was cross. Thomas, you're late. Sir Topham and Lady Hat had to go to the party and Bertie the bus. But Bertie hasn't arrived at the party. Neither have the children or the very important visitors. Thomas was puzzled. If Sir Topham Hat is on Bertie, then who is on board Annie? Just then, Thomas's passenger stepped down. Thomas knew he had to ask a question he hadn't asked before, even if he looked silly. Excuse me, Sir Topham. You don't quite seem yourself today. Is everything all right? Thomas's passenger beamed brightly. Yes, Thomas, but I'm not Sir Topham Hat. I'm Sir Loam Hat, Sir Topham's brother. Thomas was amazed. That explained everything. But he wished now that he had asked his question earlier. Now there was no time to waste if he wanted to be a really useful engine. Bertie must have broken down. We must find him right away. Sir Topham Hat's brother was very excited. Hooray! Another game of hide and seek! Now Thomas was stern. No, Sir Loam Hat. I have to work hard and quickly. Otherwise, your brother's party will be spoiled. Sir Loam boarded Annie, and Thomas puffed away. Thomas found Bertie the bus. Smoke billowed from his engine. Bertie looked very unhappy. So did Sir Topham and Lady Hat. Thomas, where have you been? Just then, Sir Topham Hatt's brother stepped down from Annie. Sir Topham Hatt sighed. Oh, no, Loam. Have you been up to your old tricks again? Absolutely right, Topham. I've been having a wonderful time with Thomas. Sir Topham Hatt didn't think this was funny at all. Loam, you have caused confusion and delay. We must hurry. Thomas delivered Sir Topham Hatt, his brother, and Lady Hat to the party just in time. The party looked grand, but Thomas couldn't stay. 
he had work to do. First, Thomas chuffed to the whispering woods. Edward was very happy to see Thomas. Go straight to the party with the children, Edward. Sir Topham Hatt is waiting. It was his brother, Sir Loam, who was playing hide and seek. Next, Thomas found Gordon. Gordon was huffing and puffing as slowly as a snail down a rickety branch line. Oh, the indignity. Hurry, Gordon, to the next express line. Race like a rocket to the party. That made Gordon very happy. At last, Thomas chuffed back to the party. Edward and Gordon were already there. What a wonderful party. And it was. Everyone was laughing. Then Thomas and his friends heard something very extraordinary. Sir Topham Hatt chuckled even louder than his brother. And that made Thomas happiest of all. Time for a story. It was a beautiful day on the island of Soda. The sun was shining and the birds were singing. Thomas had worked hard all morning. He tooted happily to the children as he chuffed back to Tidmouth Chase. Sir Topham Hatt was waiting. He had an important special. This afternoon, there is to be a special story time for the children at the library. I need an engine to collect the new storybooks from Maithwaite Station and take them to the library. Thomas wished his hardest that he would be given the special. Listening to stories with the children was his favorite thing to do. Thomas, you will deliver the special. Make sure the books are at the library on time. Thomas was excited. Yes, sir. And Thomas chuffed cheerfully away. Thomas puffed fast along the tracks. I mustn't be late for story time. I'll chuff and I'll puff to be there on time. Thomas steamed into Maithwaite Station. Hello, Thomas. I'm here to collect the new storybooks. We'll have your freight cars ready in two toots of a whistle, Thomas. Thomas saw the storybooks piled high in the two freight cars. There were red books, green books, and blue books. There were big books, small books, square books, and even round books. They look wonderful. Soon, Thomas was coupled up to the freight cars. I must hurry. I have to deliver the storybooks to the library on time. Thomas was very excited. He pumped his pistons and puffed quickly out of the station. Thomas didn't wait for the books to be covered. Thomas steamed quickly along the track. I mustn't be late for story time. I'll chuff and I'll puff to be there on time. The books began to jiggle and joggle, but Thomas didn't notice. Thomas puffed fast towards the junction. He could see the signal ahead was red. I don't want to stop. The children are waiting for their special story time. Then an idea flew into his funnel. I can take the branch line. I know there aren't any junctions on that. So, Thomas puffed quickly down the branch line. Thomas felt very pleased. He chuffed faster and faster, and the books jiggled and joggled more and more. But Thomas didn't notice. I mustn't be late for story time. I'll chuff and I'll puff to be there on time. Thomas raced round the bend. Ahead, there was a sign for works on the track. Oh, bother! I'm sure the works on the tracks won't stop me. So, Thomas puffed faster and faster. 
Then there was trouble. Workers were mending the broken track. The broken track was very bumpy. Thomas bumped and jumped. The books jiggled and joggled. Then Thomas hit the biggest bump of all. Whoa! Cinders and ashes! The freight cars bounced high in the air. They crashed and bashed. They clattered and shattered down to the tracks. Thomas put on his brakes. The books flew high and wide through the air and landed all over Farmer McColl's field. Oh, my! The freight cars are broken. The storybooks are all over the field. And the children now won't have their special story time. And it's all my fault. I was in such a hurry to be on time, I didn't want to wait. I should have waited for the books to be covered. And I shouldn't have taken the bumpy branch line. Oh, dear. <sighs> Fizzling fireboxes. What am I going to do? Thomas looked at the storybooks. The sun was shining on them. The books looked even redder and greener and bluer than they had in the freight cars. The storybooks look so pretty in this field. I wish the children could see them. Then an idea flew into his funnel. I'll bring the children to the storybooks. They can have a picnic story time in the sunshine. That really will be special. So Thomas puffed off to collect the children. First, I must collect Annie and Clarabelle. Victor and Kevin were busy at work as Thomas chuffed into the Sodor Steamworks. Hello, Victor. I'm here to collect Annie and Clarabelle. I'm going to take the children to a special picnic story time in the sunshine. That's a wonderful idea, my friend. The children will like that. They always have their best time with you, Thomas. Thomas was pleased Victor and Kevin liked his idea. Later, Thomas huffed happily out of the steamworks with Annie and Clarabelle. Thomas puffed proudly up to the library at the town hall. The children were waiting. They were very surprised to see Annie and Clarabelle instead of cars of storybooks. Today, I'm taking you to an extra special story time. It's a picnic story time in the sunshine. All aboard! <laughs> The children had never had a picnic story time. They thought it was a wonderful idea. Thomas blew his whistle and chuffed cheerfully away. Thomas puffed towards the junction. This time, Thomas waited. Then, he took the branch line back to Farmer McCall's field. Thomas chuffed slowly and carefully up to Farmer McCall's field. Here we are, the picnic story time special. The children cheered. They could see all the different colored books in the field. They were very excited. This was the best story time ever. Thomas watched as the children ran onto the field. They each picked up a book, and their teacher began to read with them. This is a story, children, all about a little boy. A little boy who didn't like waiting. He didn't like waiting because he thought he'd miss out on all the good things. But then he found out that good things are worth waiting for. As the story began, Thomas looked at all the happy children. He smiled his biggest smile. The children's picnic story time really is worth waiting for. Buzzy Bees. It was a fine summer morning on the island of Sodor. The sun was shining, the birds sang. 
the flowers bloomed, and Thomas clickety-clacked along the track to Brendam Docks. Thomas's good friend, Hero, was unloading at Brendam Docks. Good morning, Hero. Sir Topham Hatt tells me I have a special special today for Farmer Trotter. Good morning, my friend. Yes, you do. Look. Thomas gasped. Flatten my funnel. They look like small white wooden houses. Who lives in them? Bees, my good friend. Lots and lots of bees. Their houses are called hives. Inside the hives, the bees are very busy making honey. This made Thomas excited. Sir Topham Hatt always has honey on his crumpets. I'll puff as fast as I can to deliver the beehives to Farmer Trotter. Suddenly, Hero was stern. Thomas, chuff slowly and smoothly. Take the truck through the woods. Then the bees will rest. You have to look after bees very carefully. Don't worry, Hero. I will. They'll be happy with me. Hero smiled. Very well. I have to deliver these crates. Then I must pick up some flowers from Farmer McCall. I will visit the bees when I've finished. Hero steamed slowly away. Thomas was coupled up to the beehives. Off we go, bees. Thomas puffed proudly to a junction. Ahead, he saw the track through the woods. The other track ran past a field, full of flowers and bright sunshine. The field with flowers is much prettier than the woods. I'm sure the bees would like that better. So, Thomas didn't take the track through the wood as Hero had told him to. Thomas huffed happily along. Buzzy bees are busy bees, and busy bees make honey. Buzzy bees are happy bees when it's warm and sunny. Suddenly, there was a buzzing and a bizzing. Thomas applied his brakes. Bust my buffers, what's that? Thomas looked over to the field. His bees were everywhere. They buzzed busily, flying from flower to flower. Thomas was surprised. Oh, no. Come back, bees. Come back to your hives. The bees weren't listening to Thomas. They were too busy buzzing in the field. Thomas tried again. Please come back, bees. We'll be late for Farmer Trotter. But still, the bees weren't listening to Thomas. Fizzling fireboxes. I can't take the beehives to Farmer Trotter empty. Then, an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. The bees like flowers. I will chuff my hardest to Farmer McCall's and pick up the flatbed of flowers. Then, the bees will buzz around my flowers and back to their hives. So, Thomas was uncoupled from his flatbed. Then, he steamed swiftly away. Thomas arrived at Farmer McCall's farm. He saw the flatbed of flowers. I'm sure Hero won't mind if I borrow his flowers. I'll bring them back as soon as the bees are in their hives again. And Thomas huffed happily back to the field. The bees were still buzzing busily from flower to flower in the field. Then they saw Thomas's flowery flatbed. The buzzy bees left the field and buzzed all around Thomas. They flew into his funnel. They buzzed his boiler and whizzed his wheels. Trembling tracks? This flatbed of flowers wasn't a good idea. Go away, bees, please. Buzz into your hives and make honey. But the bees weren't listening to Thomas. They were too busy buzzing. I must race like the wind. Then maybe the bees will be blown off my buffers and fly back to their hives. So Thomas pumped his pistons and raced away. 
But the bees didn't mind the wind on their wings. They flew round Thomas like a buzzing cloud. Thomas chuffed and puffed to a siding. Very well, bees. If you won't leave me, I will leave you. Thomas was uncoupled from his flatbed of flowers, and he clickety-clacked away down the track. Now the buzzy bees won't bother me. They're too busy making honey for Sir Topham Hatt's tea. Thomas chuffed to a junction. Hero was there. Thomas was surprised to see his friend. Hello, Hero. You look puzzled. I am Thomas. Farmer McCall's flowers have disappeared, and you have still not delivered the bees to Farmer Trotter. He's waiting and worried. Thomas looked at his wise friend, Hero. He hadn't looked after the bees. He hadn't looked after their hives, and he hadn't taken the woodland track. But he had taken Hero's flowers. Hero, I have been very silly. I have been everything you told me not to be. But now, I will do everything you told me to do. Please wait for me here. I will bring you back your flowers. Thomas's wheels started to whir, and his boiler started to bubble. Thomas had a lot to do. Thomas puffed back to the flatbed of flowers. The bees were still buzzing, but Thomas didn't mind. Follow me, bees. I'll take you back to your hives. And Thomas weeshed away to the flatbed of beehives. Farmer Trotter is waiting for you, bees. You will like living on his farm. Then, Thomas chuffed carefully away and took the track through the woods. The woods were deep and dark. The bees felt cold. It's time to go home, all you busy bees. It's time to make honey in the shade of the trees. And the busy bees buzzed into their hives. Farmer Trotter was waiting for Thomas. He was very pleased to see his new beehives. Thank you, Thomas. But why have you brought me all those flowers? They're not for you, Farmer Trotter. Hero is waiting for these. I must hurry. Thomas pumped his pistons and puffed down the track. Hero was waiting for Thomas. So, my good friend, here are my flowers. I'm sorry, Hero. You will be late, I know. But from these flowers, Farmer Trotter will have the best honey on Sodor. The two friends smiled. It had been a very busy, buzzy day. Steamy Sodor. All the engines on Sodor like to be really useful. They huff and they puff to do their best for Sir Topham Hatt's railway. And sometimes that means doing a job they have never done before. One morning, Sir Topham Hatt had a new job for Thomas. Victor has to go to the transfer yards. He has to see one of the little engines. He will be away all day. You must look after the steamworks, Thomas. Victor will tell you all you need to know. Make sure you listen carefully. Yes, sir. Thomas was excited. The Sodor Steamworks is one of my favorite places on the island. Today, I'm going to be in charge. That's a very important job, Thomas. Good luck. Thank you, Percy. And Thomas puffed proudly away to the Steamworks and his new job. Victor was waiting for Thomas at the Steamworks. Thomas was very excited. His boiler bubbled and his firebox fizzed. Hello, my friend. This is a big day for you. The Steamworks will be very busy. Not too busy for me, Victor. I like being busy. <laughs> That's good, my friend. Now, when an engine comes in, you have to listen carefully to their problem. If you need help, ask Kevin. That's right, Thomas. 
When you're in a fix, look no further. Just ask Kevin. It'll save you bother. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Are you listening, Thomas? Yes, Victor. But Thomas was too excited to listen. He wanted to get on with his very important job. Don't worry, Victor. I know just what to do. Hurry, Victor. You'll be late for the little engines. Very well, my friend. Good luck. And Victor steamed away. Thomas was now in charge. Soon, Spencer steamed sulkily into the steamworks. His shiny silver paintwork was scratched and scuffed. Spencer was surprised to see Thomas. Uh, where's Victor? He's away today. I'm in charge. Spencer was worried. Oh my, Spencer. You are in a mess. I'll check you over from wheels to whistle. Put Spencer up on the hoist, please, Kevin. Kevin was worried. Are you sure, boss? I mean, Thomas? I don't think Spencer needs to go on the hoist. I mean, he needs a repaint, boss. But Thomas wasn't listening to Kevin. He was too excited. He was in charge of the steamworks. Put Spencer up on the hoist, Kevin. Over here, Spencer. <laughs> Please, if you don't mind. Please, <laughs> thank you. So, Spencer huffed huffily to the hoist. Then, Henry chuffed in. Henry wasn't well. He spluttered and stuttered. He wheezed and sneezed. Henry was surprised to see Thomas. What are you doing here, Thomas? Victor is away today. I'm in charge. Henry sighed. Then, he wheezed. Then, he sneezed. Footplates and fenders. I know just what's wrong with you, Henry. You have been given the wrong coal. Henry gasped. No, Thomas. It's not my... <laughs> but Thomas wasn't listening. Don't worry, Henry. We'll have you puffing proudly in no time. Kevin, bring over some of Henry's special coal, please. But... but what about Spencer, boss? But Thomas wasn't listening. Quick as you can, Kevin. So Kevin trundled to the coal. Spencer sat sniffly by the hoist. Henry <laughs> spluttered and stuttered. And Thomas felt pleased and proud. I like being in charge of the steamworks. Then, James steamed snootily in. Straw and twigs blocked his funnel. Why are you here, Thomas? Victor is away today. I'm in charge. Bubbling boilers, you are in a mess. What happened to you? I can't puff properly. <laughs> I know just what you need. Kevin? Yes, boss? I mean, Thomas? James needs a new funnel. No, I don't. But Thomas wasn't listening to James. But what about Henry's coal and Spencer on the hoist? Thomas wasn't listening to Kevin. Find the spare funnel, please. Kevin was now very confused. To find the funnel, he had to put down Henry's coal. But first, he had to raise Spencer on the hoist. It was all too much for Kevin. Oh, dear, boss. Uh, Thomas. Don't worry, Kevin. I'm in charge. Then there was trouble. Kevin reeled and rolled back towards the hoist. And with a biff and a bash, he hit a big green button. That made Spencer shudder into the air. Trembling tracks, what's happening? Kevin gasped. <gasps> Heaving hooks! Sorry, Spencer. Then Kevin dropped Henry's coal right in front of Henry's nose. Bust my boiler and crashing coals. Kevin rocked and rolled into James. Mind my shiny red paintwork. James was so upset, he blew the biggest puff of steam he had ever blown all over Victor. Victor had just arrived from the transfer yards. Now, he was covered from buffer to buffer in twigs, soot, and straw. Victor's wheels wobbled and his steam stuttered. <gasps> Sizzling Sodor! What has happened to my beautiful steamworks? Thomas looked at Victor and then at the mess and the muddle. Cinders and ashes, this is all my fault. No, boss, I mean 
Thomas, I'm sure it's my fault. I'm sorry, boss. I did try to say, boss. No, Kevin. It's not your fault. I didn't listen to Victor. I didn't listen to you. And I didn't listen to my friends. I was too excited and too silly. I think, my friend, you are right. What will you do now? I'm sorry to all of you. Now I'll listen to you, and I'll make sure you're all fixed properly. So, Victor and Thomas went first to Spencer. I don't need checking from wheels to whistle. I need new paint for my scuffs and scratches. This time, Thomas listened. Don't worry, Spencer. You'll be sparkling silver in no time. That made Spencer very happy. Next, Victor and Thomas talked to Henry. I have my special coal, but there's something wrong with my firebox. It makes me... <laughs> wheeze and sneeze. Don't worry, Henry. Your firebox will be cleaned. You won't wheeze and sneeze anymore. And Thomas was right. Pumping pistons. No more wheezes and sneezes. That's much better. Lastly, Victor and Thomas listened to James. I don't need a new funnel. I need my old funnel cleaned and polished. James, you will have the most perfectly polished funnel on Sodor. Oh. James's funnel was shining like the sun. James smiled from fender to footplate. Soon, all the engines were fixed. They were ready to be really useful again. Well done, my friend. Time to go home. Not quite, Victor. It's time to say thank you to Kevin. Anytime, boss. I mean, Thomas. <laughs> and everyone <laughs> laughed and laughed and laughed. Creaky Cranky. It was the spring holiday on Sodor. There was to be a party for the children at the Duke and Duchess's new summer house. All the engines were very excited and very busy. Thomas chuffed cheerfully into the docks. James and Henry were passing through. Good morning, James. Good morning, Henry. Where are you puffing to? I'm taking these straw bales to the summer house for the children to climb on. I'm taking wood to make a stage for the children's show and barrels of lemonade to drink. How wonderful. I'll see you later at the summer house. Good morning, Cranky. What's good about it? It's the Duke and Duchess's party day. Party smarty. I don't go to parties. I'm stuck here loading and unloading all day. I haven't had a moment to rest my hook. That load is for me. It's eggs for the children to paint. Hurry up, Cranky. You're creaky, Cranky. What's the matter? Are the eggs too heavy a load for you? <laughs> Cranky didn't like Thomas's joke. He didn't like being called creaky. No, they're not too heavy for me. They're light as fluff. <laughs> You're not strong enough to pull anything heavier than fluff, Tiny Thomas. That's why Henry and James have the heavy loads. Now Thomas didn't like Cranky's joke. Fizzling fireboxes! I'm as strong as any other engine! You're not as strong as me. I can lift much heavier loads than you could ever pull. Thomas really didn't like that. We'll see, Cranky. I have lots of time to deliver the eggs. First, I have to prove Cranky wrong. James has a heavy load. I'll go and find James. So Thomas steamed sternly out of the docks. Thomas found James at the junction by the washdown. Hello, James. I don't have a lot of jobs today. Shall I deliver your heavy load of wooden barrels for you? You can stay here at the washdown. Then you'll be perfectly polished for the party. James thought this was a very good idea. Thank you, Thomas. So James was uncoupled from the heavy flatbed of wood, and Thomas was coupled up. The flatbed was heavy. Huffing and puffing, Thomas set off for the docks. Thomas chuffed back into the docks. You again. What are you doing with that wood? 
This flatbed is very heavy. I'm sure you can't lift it. Cranky looked at the flatbed of wood and barrels. I'm sure I can. Cranky's hook swung low over the wood. Thomas watched and waited. With a creak and a crank, and a crank and a creak, Cranky raised the flatbed into the air. Thomas's boiler buzzed. Told you so. You're still creaky, Cranky. And you're still tiny, Thomas. That made Thomas very cross. I will prove Cranky wrong and still have time to deliver the eggs. I'm sure Henry had an even heavier load. I'll go and find Henry. So Thomas steamed stormily away. Thomas found Henry waiting by the coal hopper for his special coal. Hello, Henry. I don't have a lot of jobs today. Shall I deliver your heavy load of straw bales for you? Then you can wait here for your special coal. Henry thought this was a very good idea. Thank you, Thomas. So Henry was uncoupled from the heavy flatbed of straw bales, and Thomas was coupled up. The flatbed was very heavy. Huffing and puffing, Thomas set off once more for the docks. Soon, Thomas puffed back into the docks. You again. Now, what are you doing with those straw bales? This flatbed is very, very heavy. I'm sure you can't lift this. Cranky looked at the flatbed of straw bales. I'm sure I can. Cranky's hook swung low over the straw. Thomas watched and waited. With a creak and a crank, and a crank and a creak, Cranky raised the flatbed of straw into the air. Thomas's funnel fizzed. Told you so. You're still creaky, Cranky. And you're still tiny, Thomas. That made Thomas even crosser. More than ever, Thomas wanted to prove Creaky Cranky wrong. He had to find the heaviest thing he could. Then. An idea flew into his funnel. Lift me, Cranky. Cranky looked at Thomas. He couldn't let Thomas win. Cranky's hook swung low over Thomas. Thomas hardly dared puff. With a creak and a crank, and a crank and a creak, and very, very slowly, Cranky raised Thomas high into the air. Bubbling boilers. Creaky Cranky is lifting me. Then there was trouble. Cranky creaked louder than ever. His crane arm stuttered and juddered. It creaked and it croaked. Then it cracked. Oh no! Cranky's crane arm had broken, and it was all Thomas's fault. Thomas was stuck high in the sky and blowing in the breeze. Then Sir Topham had arrived. Thomas, what are you doing up there? I'm sorry, sir. I was. You are causing confusion and delay. The Duke and Duchess have no wood, straw bales, or eggs. Now I see you have them all here. Cranky is broken, and you, Thomas, think it's a good time to try being a bird. The Duke and Duchess are waiting. Thomas felt very silly. Then Sir Topham Hatt looked at Cranky, and you're as silly as Thomas. Cranky crumpled. The shame. To be as silly as a steamy. Soon, a workman had climbed up Cranky. Slowly and carefully, Thomas was lowered and landed with a jolt and a judder. Just as Spencer arrived. Dear oh dear, Thomas, what a mess! Little engines can get into very big trouble. Thomas felt even sillier in front of Spencer. But he knew now that being strong was only good if you were also really useful, and he had to be really useful. Spencer, I need your help. You're very strong and can pull much heavier loads than me. Will you take the wood, the straw bales, and the eggs to the summer house for me, please? It's my fault that Cranky is broken. I must put everything right as quickly as I can. Hmm. Very well. Thank you. I'm sorry, Cranky. I know you're strong, stronger than me. I'll be back soon with the right parts to fix you. Then Thomas pumped his pistons and puffed out of the docks. Thomas wished like the wind all the way to the steamworks. 
Hello, Victor. Cranky creaked, and now he's cracked. He needs new parts. You've come to the right place, my friend. Parts are plenty here. We'll have Cranky up and lifting in no time. Soon, Thomas's flatbed was loaded with new parts for Cranky. Thank you, Victor. Of course, my friend. Give Cranky my best! And Thomas puffed happily away. Thomas puffed into the docks with his heavy flatbed. Cranky was still looking crumpled. Here you are, Cranky. We'll have you fixed in no time. Thank you, Thomas. That's a heavy flatbed. You know, you're not tiny. And you're not creaky. Cranky laughed. <laughs> and that made Thomas <laughs> laugh, too. <laughs> Playtime. All the engines on the island of Sodor are very happy. They are all pleased to work on Sir Topham Hatt's railway. There is always something new and exciting to look forward to. Like the day the famous singer Alicia Botti came to give a concert at the town hall. Thomas met Percy at the washdown. His boiler bubbled with pride. Hello, Percy. I have a very special special. I must meet Alicia Botti at the docks. Then I have to take her straight to the town hall for a grand concert. That's exciting. I have news too. Someone else is arriving at the docks. Thomas was puzzled. Charlie, the new engine. Thomas hadn't heard about Charlie. What's so special about Charlie? He's the favorite engine of the mainland controller. Everyone says he is the most fun engine ever. Even more fun than you, Thomas. Percy chuffed cheerfully away. Bumpers and buffers. I don't think any engine is more fun than me. And Thomas puffed off to the docks, his wheels whirring with worry. Thomas collected Alicia Botti at the docks. Miss Botti looked very grand. I'm pleased to be traveling with you, Thomas. Thomas's pistons popped with pride. Then he saw Charlie. Charlie's smaller than me, and he certainly doesn't look more fun than me. Hello, are you Thomas? Yes, I am. I'm Charlie. I've heard a lot about you. You have? The engines on the mainland say you're even more fun than me. Thomas was surprised. Then Sir Topham had arrived. Thomas, Charlie has a busy first day. Edward has broken down. Charlie must pick up Edward's freight cars of seats from the steamworks. Then he has to collect ice cream from the dairy and red carpet from Knapford Station. If Charlie needs help, I'm sure you will look after him. Yes, sir. Yippee! Want to come with me? Why? It'll be fun. Sorry, I'm busy. I heard you were a fun engine. Maybe you're not fun at all. Thomas didn't like being told he was no fun at all. I'll come with you to the steamworks, and then I'll take Miss Body to the town hall. I'm sure I have plenty of time. So Thomas steamed slowly towards the steamworks, and Charlie followed behind. Thomas chuffed carefully to a junction. Miss Body smiled sweetly from her passenger car. Charlie pulled alongside. This isn't fun. I'll show you fun. Yippee! <laughs> Thomas couldn't let Charlie be more fun than him. He pumped his pistons, bubbled his boiler, and fizzed his firebox. The race was on. Thomas and Charlie roared and raced. Their funnels were fiery. They were soon red-faced. Alicia Botti could not believe her eyes. My goodness me, this is a surprise. I thought Thomas was steady and slow. What thrills and what fun on the way to my show. The engines were laughing. The race was such fun. You're quick and you're speedy, but I'm number one. With a whoosh and a whoosh, the two engines pulled into the steamworks. Steady, boys. Who is your friend, Thomas? Charlie. He's new. I'm fun. And I'm Alicia Botti. <gasps> Miss Botti, it is an honor to have you visit our steamworks. Kevin. Sorry, boss. And while Charlie was coupled up to Edward's flatbed, Miss Botti sang to the steamworks. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
Then it was time to go. You are fun, Thomas. Let's go to the dairy. Thomas knew he should take Miss Botty straight to the town hall. But he didn't want Charlie to think he wasn't fun. I'm sure I still have time to get Miss Botty to the town hall. So Thomas and Charlie left for the dairy. Soon, the two engines came to a junction. Let's puff down there. We can't. That's a bumpy track. But it'll be fun. Thomas wanted to be fun, so he followed Charlie down the bumpy track. Thomas and Charlie bounced and bumped. Ooh. Alicia Botty <laughs> juddered and jumped. <laughs> and the couplings jiggered and jiggled looser and looser. At last, Thomas and Charlie pulled up to the dairy. That was fun! <laughs> And this is even more fun. We must go, Miss Body. You mustn't be late for the concert. Bye-bye. If you were a really fun engine, you would race me to Napford. Thomas knew he was late, but he wanted to be really fun. Just one last race, Charlie. Thomas and Charlie thundered and roared. Thomas thought he had never puffed so fast. I'm first. Let's race again. Then Gordon whooshed past. He was huffing grandly. He was taking Sir Topham Hat to the town hall. Thomas gasped. <gasps> I'm late. I must wish like the wind to the town hall. Thomas pumped his pistons, and he chuffed away quickly in a cloud of steam. I mustn't be late! I mustn't be late! Then there was trouble. Thomas didn't know that his couplings had unhooked. Thomas raced on to the town hall, alone. Thomas steamed to a stop. His cheeks were redder than James's shiny coat. Here I am, sir! Sir Topham Hatt looked hard at Thomas. Here you are, Thomas. But where are Annie and Clarabelle? And where is Miss Botty? Thomas felt terrible. He had been having fun when he should have been really useful. I'm sorry, sir. I've lost them. Sir Topham Hatt boomed. Then you had better go and find them. Thomas puffed to a junction. He had looked for Annie and Clarabelle, but he couldn't find them anywhere. Then Charlie chuffed up. He was on his way to the town hall. Hello, Charlie. I've lost Annie and Clarabelle and Miss Body. The couplings must have come loose on the bumpy track and snapped when we were racing. Don't worry, Thomas. I have a good idea. What's that? We'll have a race. Whoever finds Annie and Clarabelle first is the number one fun engine. Thomas was stern. He didn't think that was a good idea. No, Charlie. This isn't the time for fun. This is the time for being really useful. I have a very important job to do. And Thomas huffed away. Thomas chuffed carefully. He was very worried. Then Thomas heard singing. He smiled from buffer to buffer. That's Miss Body singing. Hooray! <laughs> Thomas found Miss Body by the bridge. He had never heard anything as beautiful as Miss Botty singing. Miss Botty must go. I'm sorry I kept you waiting. And Miss Botty cheerfully waved goodbye as the crowd clapped and cheered. Thomas puffed to the town hall with Annie and Clarabelle. Sir Topham Hatt was cross. At last, Thomas, you've made Miss Botty very late. Not at all, Bertram. Thomas has made me very happy. I've had the ride of my life. So many people to sing to, and such fun. That made Thomas smile, and so did his fun friend, Charlie. The Lion of Sodor. It was a beautiful day on the island of Sodor. The sky was blue, and the sun was shining brightly. Thomas was chuffing cheerfully to Brendam Docks. He felt very happy. Thomas had to collect a special special, but he didn't know what it was. 
Hello, Cranky. Is my special ready? Yes, it is. The mayor is waiting for it at Knapford. You must puff very carefully. Thomas was puzzled. What is it, Cranky? It's the Lion of Sodor. Cinders and ashes, how exciting. I promise to take extra special care of it. I've never carried a real live lion before. When Cranky heard this, he was surprised. No, Thomas, the Lion of Sodor isn't a... But Thomas was too excited to listen to Cranky. He was already puffing proudly out of the docks. Thomas puffed happily along. Then he met Henry. Hello, Thomas. You look happy. What's your special? It's a lion. Bust my buffers. That's exciting. I only have sticky syrup to deliver. Suddenly, an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. I promise to take extra special care of my lion. I think he might really like sticky syrup. Could I have some for him, Henry? Of course. Thomas's engineer poured some sticky syrup into the lion's crate. Thank you, Henry. I have to hurry now. The mayor is waiting for the Lion of Sodor. Henry was surprised. Fizzling fireboxes! Thomas has made a mistake! Stop, Thomas! The Lion of Sodor isn't a... But Thomas didn't stop. And he didn't listen. Next, Thomas met Edward. Hello, Thomas. You look happy. What's your special? It's a lion. Flatten my funnel. How exciting. I only have to deliver fresh fish. I think my lion would really like fresh fish. May I have some for him, Edward? Of course. So Thomas's driver put some fresh fish into the lion's crate. Thank you, Edward. I must hurry now. The mayor is waiting for the Lion of Sodor. Edward was surprised. <gasps> Clattering coaches. Stop, Thomas. The Lion of Sodor isn't a... But Thomas didn't stop. And he didn't listen. Then Thomas saw Toby. Hello, Thomas. You look happy. What's your special? It's a lion. Buff, my boiler, how exciting. I only have straw in my freight cars. I'm sure my lion would really like some soft straw to lie on. May I have some for him, Toby? Of course. So Thomas's driver put some soft straw into the lion's crate. Thank you, Toby. I really have to hurry. The mayor will be waiting for the Lion of Sodor. Toby was surprised. Uh-oh, trembling trucks. Stop, Thomas! The Lion of Sodor isn't a... But Thomas didn't stop, and he didn't listen. Thomas's pistons pumped and his wheels whirred. He couldn't wait to deliver his lion. He chuffed his hardest and raced on towards Knapford Station. At last, Thomas puffed proudly into Knapford. Sir Topham Hatt was there. So were the other engines. I'm very excited, Thomas. This is a big day. The Lion of Sodor is here. Thomas was uncoupled from the flatbed, and he pulled away to join the other engines. The workman carefully opened the lion's crate. Then the engines gasped. The Lion of Sodor wasn't a real lion at all. It was a statue. And now it was covered in sticky syrup, fresh fish, and straw. Sir Topham Hatt was cross. Thomas, this is a terrible mess. Gordon and James <laughs> laughed, and Thomas felt very silly. I'm sorry. I thought I had a real lion in my crate. I wanted to take extra special care of it. I didn't know the Lion of Sodor was a statue. So Sir Topham had told Thomas all about the Lion of Sodor, and the other engines listened carefully. 
So you see, Thomas, it was the most famous statue on Sodor. Then it broke. This is the shiny new statue we have been waiting for. The mayor is coming at tea time. And now look at it. I'll make sure it's clean, sir. I promise the Lion of Sodor will be shiny and new again in no time. Very well, Thomas. Thomas still felt very silly. Cheer up, Thomas. I didn't know the Lion of Sodor was a statue either. It all happened a long, long time ago. Not many engines remember that time. We tried to tell you, but you didn't stop. I'm sorry, Henry. I should have listened. Now I must hurry. I must get the Lion of Sodor cleaned right away. Why don't you take it to the washdown? This time, Thomas listened. What a good idea. Thank you, Henry. Thomas was coupled to the flatbed and he chuffed quickly away. Thomas took the Lion of Sodor to the washdown. Soon, the sticky mess was washed off. That looks much better, Thomas. But now the statue isn't shiny. Take it to the Steamworks, Thomas. They'll polish it until it sparkles and shines. This time, Thomas listened. Thank you, Edward. That's a very good idea. Victor will know just what to do. And Thomas puffed quickly away. Thomas took the Lion of Sodor to the steamworks. Workmen polished the statue until it shined and sparkled, just as Edward had said. The Lion of Sodor looks much better now, Thomas. But it's nearly tea time. The mayor will soon be at Knapford, and it's a long way. Take the track by the windmill. That'll get you there in time. This time, Thomas listened. Thank you, Toby. That's a good idea. Thomas took the shortcut past the windmill. He huffed and puffed as fast as his pistons could pump towards Knapford. Children cheered and passengers waved as Thomas chuffed by. Everyone wanted to see the Lion of Sodor, and everyone wanted Thomas to stop. I can't stop now. I mustn't be late. The mayor will be at Knapford, and he won't wait. And Thomas whooshed on his way. Thomas puffed proudly into Knapford Station. The mayor had just arrived. He was delighted to see the new Lion of Sodor. The statue shined and sparkled in the sun. Well done, Thomas. This is the finest statue I've ever seen. And the cleanest! <laughs> Everyone cheered. And Thomas smiled from footplate to fender. The biggest present of all. For all the engines on the island of Sodor, there are jobs to be done, visitors to meet, and friends to greet. One day, there was a very special friend to greet. Hero was coming back to Sodor. He was to help with the summer visitors. Thomas and Percy waited for him at Brendam Docks. I'm so excited, my firebox is fizzing. And my boiler is bubbling. Hero, our special friend, is coming back to Sodor. Hello, my good friends. I have missed you. We missed you too, Hero. The three engines tooted and hooted with happiness. Welcome back, Hero. First, you must go to the steamworks. Victor will check your engine after your long journey. Of course, sir. Every day, I want to be a really useful engine. Then, you must go to Knapford Station. I will meet you there. Yes, sir. Of course, sir. Hero puffed proudly away. I want there to be a welcome party for Hero at Knapford. Percy, you must collect Lady Hat and bring her to the party. Thomas, 
You must tell the engines to chuff quickly to Knapford for the party. Then Sir Topham had left. Thomas and Percy were excited. Oh my! A welcome party will make Hero very happy. A welcome present would make Hero even happier. That's a good idea. I must go now, Thomas. Lady Hat will be waiting. Then Thomas steams slowly away. I'm sure I'll find something special for Hero. I'll look as I puff round the island, telling my friends about the party. Thomas clickety clacked along the track. Something special from Sodor for my new friend. I'll search the whole island from end to end. Then an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. I'm sure there'll be something special at Farmer McCall's farm. So Thomas pumped his pistons and raced to Farmer McCall's farm. Emily was there. She was collecting straw. Hero has come back. I'm finding a welcome present for him. That's exciting. Good luck, Thomas. Emily puffed away. Thomas didn't tell her about the party at Knapford. He was too busy looking for a welcome present. Thomas saw the big brown barn. Perhaps Hero would like a barn. He could keep special things safe in a barn. But the barn is too big. And Thomas steamed slowly away. Something special from Sodor for my new friend. I'll search the whole island from end to end. Then another idea flew into Thomas's funnel. I'm sure there'll be something special at the quarry. So Thomas huffed happily to the quarry. Mavis, James, Toby, and Henry were there. They were busy shunting slate cars. Hero has come back. I'm finding a welcome present for him. That's a wonderful idea, Thomas. Henry, James, and Toby chuffed away to shunt freight cars. Thomas didn't tell them about the party at Knapford. Thomas looked all around the quarry, but all he could see was Sodor slate. Slate is very special to Sodor, but slate is too small to be a present. I must look for something else. So Thomas chuffed away. Something special from Sodor for my new friend. I'll search the whole island from end to end. Then Thomas gasped. The steam works. I'm sure there'll be something special there. So Thomas chuffed cheerfully to the steam works. Hello, Kevin. I'm looking for a welcome present for Hero. It has to be something special. Thomas saw an old bell. I'm sure Hero would like a bell. Then everyone would hear him coming. Good idea, Thomas. Good idea. But when Kevin picked up the bell, it clanged and clanked. It rang and rattled. Trembling tracks. That's too noisy. Hero will soon be at Knapford to see Sir Topham Hatt. Bust my buffers! I must hurry. Thomas raced out of the steamworks. He didn't tell Victor and Kevin about the party either. Thomas raced into Knapford Station. Hero was waiting, all alone. Thomas gasped. Cinders and ashes! I haven't found a welcome present for Hero, and I haven't told anyone about the party. This won't make Hero happy. Thomas felt terrible. Then his boiler bubbled and his wheels whirred. Hello, Hero. Goodbye, Hero. And Thomas steamed swiftly out of the station. Thomas puffed to Farmer McCall's. Emily, chuff as fast as you can to Knapford. Sir Topham Hat is having a welcome party for Hero. Tell everyone you pass. Thomas, I've had a marvelous idea for a special present for Hero. I'm sure he would like a bright, shiny dome. Victor must have one. Thomas was stern. Thank you, Emily. Now is not the time to find presents. You must hurry. And Thomas chuffed quickly away. Mavis, Toby, James, and Henry were still at the quarry. 
You must all chuff to Knapford as fast as you can for Hero's welcome party. Thomas, I think I know exactly what Hero would like as a special present. A new glowing lamp! That would be very special. Thomas was firm. Thank you, Henry. Now is not the time to find presents. You must hurry. And Thomas steams swiftly away to the steamworks. Kevin, please tell all the engines to race to Knapford for Hero's party. My friend, Kevin and I have been thinking, what about a new shiny buffer for Hero? I think Hero would find that very special. Don't you think so, boss? Uh, Thomas? Thomas knew what he thought. I think now is not the time to find presents. Thank you, but you must tell the engines to hurry, please. And Thomas pumped his pistons and puffed away. Thomas clickety-clacked down the track this way and that, telling his friends all about the party. Thomas puffed into Knapford Station. His face was red and his firebox glowed. Thomas, where have you been? Hero's welcome party is almost over. I'm sorry, sir. I was trying to find you a welcome present, Hero. Something special from Sodor. But I couldn't find anything. I'm sorry. Hero smiled. Thomas, my friend. You must not worry. My welcome present is right here. Being with my friends is the biggest present of all. And the most special present from Sodo. There is nothing more special. Then Thomas smiled and smiled. He knew Hero was right. And so did all his friends. Percy's Parcel. It was a beautiful day on the island of Sodor. The sun was shining in a bright blue sky. And all the engines were very excited. There was to be a special party. It was Sir Topham Hatt's mother's birthday. Sir Topham Hatt arrived at Tidmouth Sheds. He had a special for Thomas. Thomas, you are to collect passengers for the party from Brendam Docks. Thomas was excited. Yes, sir. Percy hoped that Sir Topham Hatt had a special for him, but he didn't. Don't worry, Percy. I'm sure you'll have a special later. But Percy still felt sad. Mavis rolled by and stopped. She could see Percy was unhappy. What's wrong, Percy? I don't have a special. Everybody else does. Don't worry, Percy. I'm sure Sir Topham Hatt will come back with a special special just for you. And when he does, be sure to tell me all about it. Just then, Sir Topham Hatt did come back. Percy was surprised. Percy, you have the most important special of all. You must collect my mother's special birthday parcel from Brendam Docks. Then you must deliver it to the birthday party at Knapford Station. Percy beamed from buffer to buffer. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Percy was excited. Mavis was right. Percy puffed into Brendam Docks. He gasped. The parcel was the most special parcel he had ever seen. Percy was so proud, his firebox fizzed. I must show Mavis straight away. She will be very proud of me. Thomas was at Brendam. He was pleased for his friend. Percy, you have the most important special of all. I know. I'm going to show Mavis my special special straight away. But don't you have to go to Knapford Station? Percy didn't want to listen to Thomas. I have plenty of time to puff to Knapford. First, I will show Mavis my special special. So, Percy set off for the quarry as quickly as he could puff. Percy steamed into the quarry. He looked for Mavis. Mavis was busy. Rocky was loading heavy crates onto freight cars, and Mavis was shunting them. It was hard work. Hello, Mavis. Hello, Percy. Look at my special special. I'm sorry, Percy. I can't stop now. I'm too busy. 
Don't worry, Mavis. I'll wait. Look out, Percy! But it was too late. Oh, no! Rocky dropped his heavy load of slate. Everyone was lost in a thick black cloud of slate dust. At last, the dust cleared. Mavis, Rocky, and Percy were covered in thick gray dust, and so was Percy's special special. Percy was upset. Bubbling boilers! Look at the birthday parcel! What am I going to do? Percy thought as hard as he could. At last, an idea flew into his funnel. I'll go to the washdown. My special special will be cleaned there as good as new. Percy, shouldn't you go straight to the party at Knapford? Percy didn't want to listen to Rocky. I'll go to Knapford Station as soon as I've shown Mavis my special special. I still have plenty of time. So, Percy steamed quickly away. Percy huffed and puffed to the washdown. James was already there having a polish. My, my, Percy, whatever happened to you? Percy felt very silly. I'd like a very good wash, please. The workmen got straight to work. Water and soapy bubbles sprayed everywhere. Soon, Percy was gleaming green again. But his special special looked terrible. Bubbling boilers! The birthday parcel is wetter than wet! What am I going to do? Percy thought as quickly as he could. At last, another idea flew into his funnel. I'll take my special special to the Sodor Steamworks. Victor will help me. His hot air blowers will dry the birthday parcel. Percy, shouldn't you go straight to the party at Knapford? Percy didn't want to listen to James. I'll go to Knapford Station as soon as I've shown Mavis my special special. I'm sure I still have plenty of time. And Percy chuffed quickly away. Percy raced like the wind to the steamworks. Percy looked for Victor at the steamworks. He couldn't find him anywhere. But he did find a workman. I'd like to be dried as quickly as you can, please. The workman was happy to help. Hot air whooshed and whirred all over Percy and all over his special special. Soon, the workman had finished. Percy felt very pleased until he saw the birthday parcel. Wobbling wheels! It's all crinkled and crumpled. What am I going to do? Percy thought as hard as he could. But this time, no ideas flew into his funnel at all. So Percy steamed sadly away. Percy clickety-clacked slowly along the track. Now, he didn't want to show Mavis his special special. He had spoiled Sir Topham Hatt's mother's birthday parcel, and he couldn't go to the party at Knapford now. Percy didn't want anyone to see him, so he chuffed into a siding to hide. He felt terrible. Then he heard Mavis and Edward chuff to the junction. Hello, Mavis. You look happy. I am. I've just picked up these brand new crates. Suddenly, Percy stopped feeling sad, and he started to listen very carefully. Brand new crates? Victor had just delivered them to the steamworks. I've never pulled brand new crates before. Goodbye, Edward. A brand new crate is just what I need. Percy pumped his pistons and puffed away to the steamworks. Hello, Victor. Hello, my friend. How can I help you? I've just seen Mavis with brand new crates. May I have one, please? Well, what for? To put my birthday parcel in. Well, of course you can, Percy. That made Percy very happy. Thank you, Victor. Soon, a new bright red crate was sitting on Percy's flatbed. This will be the grandest parcel Sir Topham Hatt's mother has ever been given. I must hurry now. Everyone will be waiting. Thank you, Victor. And Percy puffed proudly out of the steamworks. Sir Topham Hatt and his mother were waiting at Knapford Station. Sir Topham Hatt was cross. Then Percy puffed in. The brand new bright red birthday parcel looked wonderful. Everyone cheered. 
Happy birthday, ma'am. Here's your very special birthday present. Sir Topham Hatt's mother beamed, and even Sir Topham Hatt smiled. As the workmen opened the crate, everyone wanted to see what the present was. Sir Topham Hatt's mother was most excited of all. Then everyone gasped. It was a beautiful portrait of Sir Topham Hatt's mother. Oh, my, Bertram, what a wonderful surprise. I'm very happy. <coughs> That's the most special special I've ever seen, Percy. Percy smiled from footplate to fender. He was sure he was the happiest engine a 